let's jump into spring tools or id and let's start building student management system well in order to create a spring boot project go to the file new and then choose spring starter project and look at here this is a spring initializer website which is integrated in spring tools or id so instead of going into spring initializer website and creating a project over there and importing manually in spring tools or id Spring team has integrated Spring Initializer in Spring Toolsuit itself so that uh, we can go ahead and we can create Spring Boot project Spring, using Spring Initializer in Spring Toolsuit ID itself. Okay, so let's go and let's give project name as Student Management System and choose project type as Maven here and packaging as a jar, Java version 16. So Java version 16 uh, is the latest as of now. You can use java 11 or 8 as per your java installation on your machine and language java and i give group id as net.java guides but you can give any group id that you want and artifact id same as name of the project and description is something like student management system using spring boot and time leap packaging as a net.java guides.sms sms means student management system and once you are happy with the details click on next and here we have spring boot version so this is a stable and latest release of spring boot which is recommended by spring team so let's keep this default spring boot version as it is and now we're going to choose the dependencies so let's go ahead and let's choose spring web dependency so we are going to create a spring mvc application so let's choose spring web dependency if you just mouse over on this dependency you can able to read the description of this dependency so Spring Web Dependency we use to build web application as well as Spring uh, RESTful web services using Spring MUC and this dependency internally provides Apache Tomcat as a default embedded container. We are going to use Spring Data JPA to talk with the database so let's pick up Spring Data JPA dependency. Spring Data JPA is just a abstraction layer on top of JPA and it provides I mean it internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider and we can use spring data jpa to reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer so i highly suggest you guys to use spring data jpa and next we are going to use time leap as a web layer so let's go ahead and let's pick up time leap template engine dependency and we are going to use mysql database uh, to retrieve and store the data so let's choose mysql jdbc driver and we are going to also use spring boot uh, dev tool dependency so this dependency is very useful so whenever uh, we do some changes in our spring boot application we don't have to manually restart our spring boot application so this dependency will take care of you know or live reloading and configurations for enhanced development experience etc so once you pick up all the you know required dependencies then click on finish all right so maven will take a couple of minutes to download all the you know dependencies from the internet and we're gonna add a jdk 16 to our spring boot project so for that right click on the project go to the properties and go to the build path and in a library so look at here by default java standard edition 13 is added but we are going to use uh, you know jdk 16 you can use java 11 8 or 13 as per the java installer installation on your machine but i am going to use java 16 which is the latest release of java so click on GRE system library, edit and alter GRE. So I choose JDK 16, apply, apply and close. Okay, great. Now once we create Spring Boot project, next step is we're gonna, you know, create a, create a standard packaging structure for our Spring Boot project. So right click on base package, new and then choose package. And let's go ahead and let's create a controller package here. So within a controller package, we keep all of our Spring MVC controllers. So let's go and let's create one more package and let's name it as service. So we keep all of our, you know, service packages under service classes under service package. Next, create one more package and let's name it as a repository. So we keep all of our Spring, uh, Spring Data JP repository under a repository package. Next, create a one more package and let's name it as entity so we keep all jp entities inside a jp pack entity package okay uh, great 
so we'll create a few more packages as required uh, you know in a project development in further steps so let's keep keep these packages as of now all right once we create a packaging structure next step is uh, we need to configure mysql database uh, you know details in our spring boot project so we typically configure all you know database uh, related details in application.properties file so before configuring mysql uh, database details in our project first we need to create a database in mysql server so let's head over to mysql workbench so make sure that you have installed mysql server and mysql workbench on your machine so mysql workbench is basically a client which we use to interact with the mysql server so in order to create a database just type create a database and followed by name of the database let's say sms that is student management system and just execute this sql statement and refresh the schemas and there we go sms database is successfully created now let's go back to our sts id and go to application.properties file and here we configure mysql you know details for example just configure jdbc url now spring dot data source dot url and just provide a property something like jdbc colon mysql so this is a standard jdbc url uh, you know format followed by localhost so here i am giving localhost because our mysql server is located on local machine okay if your mysql server is located in on other machine then you have to provide ip address of that machine here or local you know or host of that machine here okay and followed by uh, the port of this mysql database followed by name of the database that is sms and then we add a few more attributes like use ssl equal to false we are going to disable the ssl and let's add a few more properties to this url that is server time zone so server time zone utc and we disable legacy date time code okay pretty simple similarly let's go ahead and let's configure database username and password spring dot data source dot username so in my case the username is root and let's similarly configure password dot password root so in my case my database username is root and password is also root but make sure that you will replace username and password as per your mysql mysql server installation on your machine okay don't forget to replace username and password as per your mysql you know setup now we're going to configure hibernate properties here so hibernate basically requires a dilate uh, to generate sql sql queries for a chosen database in our case we have chosen mysql database so we're going to add hibernate dilate for mysql database so let me quickly add here spring.jpa.properties.hibernate.dilate and followed by the name of the dialect that is mysql fiu in no db dialect all right great so make sure that whenever you use a database uh, with hibernate and make sure that you will add hibernate dialect for that particular database in our case we are using mysql database so hence i have added mysql hibernate dialect over here similarly let's add one more hibernate property that is auto ddl so we are going to generate or database tables automatically by using hibernate uh, after hibernate uh, you know feature so let's when let's configure that property here spring dot jpa dot hibernate dot ddl auto i am going to provide a value as update so here i have provided a value as update because we are going to create a tables in a database if they are not exist and we are going to update the existing tables so there are few more values for this property like create hyphen drop or create or validate but this but this update value makes sense for me that's why i have given update here and we are going to also set a logging level 
to see the Hibernate related queries. For that, just type the property logging dot level and then org dot hibernate dot sql equal to let's queue debug. It's pretty simple, isn't it?